Good evening and welcome to California Today. I'm Daniel Hall sitting in for Lang Jang. Here's a preview of some of today's top stories. An earthquake hit the northern part of the state last night. We'll give you the details on where it happened and who was influenced. The house of one of the Los Angeles County supervisors was raided by the Sheriff's Department. We'll have why it happened and who else has been targeted. And a teacher talked about quitting public school because of pervasive teaching of critical race theory. She's taking action into her own hands. Last night, an earthquake shook throughout California Wine County. Many reports show that the quake could be felt extensively throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. A 4.4 magnitude earthquake hit throughout Northern California on Tuesday night. It took place on the Rogers Creek Fault, which is a part of the San Andreas system. The U.S. Geological Survey reports that the epicenter was 1.8 miles south of Santa Rosa. More than 2,700 people reported feeling the earthquake from San Francisco in the south up to Clear Lake in the north. Many people took to Twitter saying that this is the first earthquake they have felt in years, if not decades. According to a tweet by Dr. Lucy Jones, a California seismologist, the last large earthquake along the Rogers Creek Fault was in the 18th century. In Los Angeles, a cleanup is underway after Tropical Storm K brought heavy rains and mudslides. Authorities remind residents to be vigilant as they return home. Cleanup efforts and damage assessments are underway in East Los Angeles after heavy rains unleashed mudslides on a mountain area scorched by a wildfire two years ago. It sent boulders across roads, carrying away cars and prompting evacuations and shelter-in-place orders. A preliminary damage report estimates that includes 30 homes were damaged or destroyed in the, in the debris flow. The storm affected approximately 3,000 residents in the communities of Forest Falls and Oak Glen. One person has been reported missing. Multiple homes and other structures had varying levels of damage, including a commercial building where the mud was so high it collapsed the roof. Firefighters went street by street to make sure no residents were trapped after mud flows began inundating roads Monday night near the community of Forest Falls. Rocks, dead trees and other debris surged down slopes with astonishing force in Forest Falls, Oak Glen and Yukaipa. While evacuation orders remain in place, some people are returning to their homes. As our friends and neighbors return to their homes, they can expect to see our deputies patrolling the neighborhoods and as added measures of security, those homes uh, to have uh, badly damaged and for families who may be out of the area. While some roadways have reopened, you will see repair crews and equipment operating in these communities. Please drive safely and with caution as they work to clear the debris. The county is seeking an emergency proclamation for federal and state assistance for those impacted by the disaster. A search warrant is underway at multiple locations in Los Angeles County. This includes a board supervisor's home and other offices. Deputies from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department searched L.A. County Supervisor Sheila Kuehl's home on Wednesday. They presented the warrant and led her outside. The Sheriff's Department served warrants in multiple locations related to an ongoing public corruption investigation. It includes the homes of Kuehl, as well as Patty Giggins, the Los Angeles County Civilian Oversight Commissioner and Executive Director of Peace Over Violence. Detectives also searched the Los Angeles County Hall of Administration, Peace Over Violence Headquarters, and LA Metro Headquarters. According to the affidavit, Sheriff Alex Villanueva has relinquished his authority as sheriff for this criminal investigation. Duties are assigned to the undersheriff. The investigation is ongoing. A Twitter whistleblower testified before senators on Tuesday. He said that Twitter executives appeared unmoved when they were notified of allegations that a Chinese spy was working for the company. Entity's Jason Perry has the story. What I discovered when I joined Twitter was that this enormously influential company was over a decade behind industry security standards. Peter Zatko, also known as Mudge, is the former head of security at Twitter. He testified that many Twitter employees had unnecessary access to users' personal information. And this kind of vulnerability is not in the abstract. It's not far-fetched to say 
that employee inside the company could take over the accounts of all of the senators in this room. Senator Chuck Grassley explained that it was more than just Twitter employees with such access. Because of Mudge's disclosures, we've learned that personal data from Twitter users was potentially exposed to foreign intelligence agencies. Senator Mike Lee wanted to know why Twitter hasn't done more to increase data security. I think they would like to, but they're simply unwilling to put the effort in at the cost of other uh, efforts such as driving revenue. Um, I'm reminded of one conversation with an executive when I said, I am confident that we have a foreign agent and their response was, well, since we already have one, what does it matter if we have more? Let's keep growing the office. NTD received the following reply from Twitter. Twitter's hiring process is independent of any foreign influence and access to data is managed through background checks and other measures. The Delaware judge overseeing the Elon Musk versus Twitter case ruled last week that Musk can include new evidence related to Zach Goh's allegations in the trial, which is set to start October 17th. Jason Perry, NTD News. Parents and leaders have raised concerns about ethnic studies in schools, saying they are racist and divisive. One former high school teacher shares why she quit teaching after raising her voice against the curriculum. Callie Fontania is a former California high school teacher of 15 years. She explains to California Insider's Siamak Karami why she quit her job after speaking out against critical race theory and ethnic studies is basically dividing our kids by color, by the color of their skin, and teaching them to look at everything through the lens of color rather than being a colorblind society. Fontania says she first noticed critical race theory when she looked at a lesson plan she shared with another teacher. She explained that it became a ninth grade requirement after Governor Gavin Newsom signed it into law requiring high schoolers to take critical race theory to graduate in 2021. It could be taught explicitly or implicitly. They taught the students how to analyze school policy through critical race theory. They also taught them the benefits of critical race theory. They taught them how colorblind society is not, pro is not progressive anymore. Um, so my students, my ninth grade students, actually s learned the real critical race theory. But there's also now a push to hide critical race theory and just teach all of the core tenets of critical race theory. She says the students were given a privilege quiz on day five. Well, a privilege quiz is basically asking the kids questions that are very carefully chosen and then ranking them by privilege against their classmates. And they were asked to reflect against their privilege if they were on the top or on the bottom against their classmates. So it's just already dividing our students. So to say that your privilege because of these 10 questions we chose that the left has chose as this is this is considered oppressed is just so wrong so we're putting this message into our kids that they're either oppressed or privileged at their most formative years of their life and it's i think it's criminal she says there was also a slide on marxism presented in a positive way their goal in this is and this is also was part of the curriculum was to decolonize america to have a revolution the goal of the class was, in, even in the first slide that the teacher gave the students, it said to be woke. She explained that teachers were also taught concepts of critical race theory in college. So when they teach other students, it carries over. In addition, they will start noticing and pointing out elements of racism. Fontania suggested parents pull their kids from public schools so that schools will receive less funding, sending a message that parents do not like what their kids are being taught. She also cashed out her retirement to open her own online, fully accredited K-12 school. To watch the full program, find California Insider on YouTube or Epic TV on the Epic Times website. Speaking of education, more than half of the students in the state's largest school district failed to meet standards in English and math. The superintendent says the pandemic lockdowns are to blame, but the solution may not come easily. According to data released by the Los Angeles Unified School District on Friday, more than half of students failed to meet state testing standards for the 2021-22 school year. 42% of students met or exceeded the state testing standard in English, while 28% met standards for mathematics. District officials blamed the results on COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. Superintendent Alberto Carvalho said, quote, there is no substitute for in-person instruction. 
The district issued several plans to improve student education, such as adding four school days to help students who are still catching up on learning. But the United Teachers Union said they would boycott the district's first of four optional school days because these days were added to the school year without labor negotiations. For students who need help with their schoolwork, California now offers free online tutoring during all hours of the day. According to the governor's office, the tutors are familiar with state curriculum and standards. Governor Gavin Newsom announced on Monday that every Californian can now get free online tutoring 24-7. It's part of $254 million to public libraries in 172 cities across 34 counties to renovate facilities. California's State Library leads the BrainFuse Help Now pilot program, offering one-on-one -on -one tutoring and assistance in math, language arts, and other subjects in different languages. People can also get help with college subjects such as math, biology, history, among other subjects. It's a new initiative to help with homework in every K-12 subject and skill-building resources for adult learners, including citizenship resources. Newsom said, Public libraries are the hearts of communities across the state and are hubs of learning, discovery, and oftentimes safety. Real-time homework help can be accessed on the BrainFuse website or any of the 1,130 local public libraries around the state. There's no age limit on who can request tutoring. This is the first round of the California State Library's $439 million rebuilding campaign for libraries. David Lamb, NTD News, California. We're going to take a short break now, but we've got a lot of good stories ready for you when we come back. Here's a look. Inflation checks are on the way. We'll have who is set to get payments and how much. The state unveiled an abortion-related website. We'll see what details are included on their page. And the governor signed a heat wave bill that comes after the state made it through a so-called heat dome last week. We'll see what the bill will do for safety. That and more on California Today. Many Californians are expecting inflation relief. It will come as a tax fund of $200 to nearly $1,000. It's based on income and number of dependents. Payments will arrive between October and January of next year. Here's a look. The middle class tax refund is a one-time payment of up to $1,050 to provide financial relief to Californians. According to the California Franchise Tax Board, people that are eligible are those that make less than $250,000 in adjusted gross income, filed a 2020 tax return by October 15th last year, weren't able to be claimed as a dependent in the 2020 tax year, lived in California for over six months in 2020, and a resident when the payment is issued. Generally, for people who filed electronically and received a 2020 tax refund by direct deposit, they should get the payment the same way. Otherwise, taxpayers will receive their payment on a debit card. Individuals with a dependent could receive $400 to $700 or $200 to $350 without dependent. Those that are married or filed jointly with a dependent could receive $600 to $1,050. Those without a dependent will receive $400 to $700. More information or calculations for refunds can be found by searching for Middle Class Tax Refund on California's Franchise Tax Board website. David Lamb, NTD News, California. California launched a new website promoting abortion. The site, funded by taxpayers, will be a one-stop shop for abortion resources in the state. On Tuesday, California launched a state-sponsored abortion website. The website comes after Governor Gavin Newsom has pledged to make California what he calls a, quote, abortion sanctuary state. Abortion remains legal and protected in California. We have your back. This comes as the Democratic state legislator passed a $200 million budget for access to abortions in California, with $1 million allocated to building a website promoting abortion services in the state. The publicly funded site, abortion.ca.gov, 
promotes abortion services, lists providers' clinics, gives links to financial assistance, and lists women's legal rights. The site also includes travel and lodging information for out-of-state women and reminds illegal immigrants that federal immigration agents cannot approach facilities. Information is also provided to teens under 18, including that girls can receive abortions without parental consent. Just before the huge heat wave dissipated from the state, the governor signed several pieces of legislation into law related to heat. One of those included ranking heat waves into disaster levels, similar to how hurricanes or wildfires are ranked. Heat waves have put California on the map, the map of extreme weather. After the especially brutal heat wave we just had around Labor Day, state officials decided to start ranking them by severity, much like hurricanes. Governor Gavin Newsom signed a bill Friday to create a statewide extreme heat ranking system by 2025. It would be the first in the country for heat waves. Assemblywoman Luce Rivas introduced the bill. Her idea for the system is to resemble the red flag warnings for wildfires and the national standard naming and ranking system for hurricanes. Recently, extreme heat waves have become more frequent. It's no longer just the summer. We've experienced them starting now in April. Um, that the, these DIY methods of keeping ourselves cool at home are not enough anymore. California and many other western states are experiencing simply unprecedented temperatures. In fact, this heat wave... At the tail end of the heat dome, Newsom signed four heat wave related bills into law on Friday. Besides the heat wave ranking system, the other bills focus on extreme heat waves impact on the state's economy, their effects on pregnant workers, and giving local authorities more climate related funding. As for which ranking convention will be adapted for this system, it's still open for discussion. Suggestions include the color-coded tier system for COVID, the National Weather Services conventions for wildfire, or the NOAA's hurricane ranking scale from number one to five. Speaking of signing legislation, the governor has about half a month left to sign any bills sitting on his desk. So far, he signed two this week, one about homelessness and one about social media. On Wednesday, Governor Gavin Newsom signed the CARE Court legislation into law. The legislation stands for Community Assistance, Recovery and Empowerment. CARE Court is for residents and homeless people deemed to be struggling with substance abuse and mental illnesses. These people could receive court-ordered medical care and housing for up to two years. The bill could target up to 12,000 homeless individuals by its own estimate. The bill lacks voluntary treatment options, while the state struggles with housing options for homeless individuals without mental health issues. And on Tuesday, Newsom also signed a social media transparency bill into law. The bill requires companies to publicly post their policies regarding issues like hate speech and disinformation. They must also report data on their enforcement of the policies. Newsom said the measure is expected to bring transparency and accountability to policies on social media content. The small beach city of El Segundo offers idyllic scenery along the Los Angeles coast, but residents and now city officials say there's a foul stench in the air ruining that feeling. And they say it's coming from a nearby water cleaning plant. Entity's Bill Thomas tells us more. In a press release, El Segundo City Council says they've unanimously declared a local state of emergency due to the alleged emission of noxious gases and foul odors coming from the neighboring Hyperion water reclamation plant. El Segundo City Council also authorized the filing of a lawsuit against the City of Los Angeles, which operates the Hyperion plant, for their persistent failure to mitigate the plant's infestation of those gases and rancid odors. Residents and business of El Segundo have complained of odors since July 11, 2021, when the plant experienced a major sewage spill and flooding. El Segundo Mayor Drew Boyle said, quote, It has been over a year since the initial sewer spill at the Hyperion plant. There have been 1,100 odor-related complaints from community members who report suffering from headaches and nausea from the smell. The mayor added that the problem has persisted despite the South Coast Air Quality Management District issuing 13 notices of violation and three abatement orders. 
Elena Stern, the Senior Public Information Director for the Department of Public Works, City of Los Angeles, told NTD News that the city cannot comment on pending or potential litigation. She added that L.A. Sanitation and Environment continues to be committed to ensuring the health and safety of our community and employees at Hyperion and takes very seriously concerns about odors. The Hyperion Water Reclamation Plant treats the wastewater of approximately 4 million people in the Los Angeles region, is managed by the Los Angeles City Sanitation Bureau, and borders the city of El Segundo. Bill Thomas, NTD News, Los Angeles. Now let's take it over to NTD's Thomas Christian for your sports roundup. I'm Thomas Christian, giving you the California Today Sports Roundup. The 49ers have signed veteran running back Marlon Mack to their practice squad on Tuesday, a sign that they are not overly optimistic they have an in-house replacement for injured starter Elijah Mitchell. Mack has struggled to stay on an NFL roster ever since he tore his Achilles tendon in September of 2020. But he did amass almost 2,000 yards over his best two seasons as a starter with the Indianapolis Colts in 2018 and 2019. He has shown in the past that, if given enough volume, he should be able to convert carries into a passable amount of yards for San Francisco. Mitchell, the week one starter, was officially placed on San Francisco's IR yesterday. That meant that all that was left of the Red and Gold's running back depth chart is third down specialist Jeff Wilson Jr. and two unproven rookies, Interion Davis Price and Jordan Mason. While Mack may not be getting the starting nod this Sunday, just five days after he signed with the team, the Niners will likely see him as a longer term solution to their death problems with Mitchell out for another eight weeks. In other injury news, Chargers Pro Bowl wide receiver Keenan Allen sat out of practice again Tuesday with a reported hamstring injury. Allen underwent an MRI to diagnose the issue after their week one victory against the Raiders and found no serious damage in Allen's leg. Chargers head coach Brandon Staley has said Allen's chances of playing in week two against the mighty Chiefs aren't looking great, but without a serious injury present, it is likely the 30-year-old wideout will be back in the lineup in a week or two. Clayton Kershaw gave up two hits over seven scoreless innings as Los Angeles won the National League West title for the ninth time in 10 seasons with a victory over Arizona at Phoenix. Joey Gallo hit a two-run homer and Freddie Freeman and Max Muncie also contributed homers of their own as the Dodgers sealed the division crown after finishing second last season behind the San Francisco Giants. Kershaw struck out five and walked one in a crisp 82-pitch effort. Dodgers 4, Diamondbacks 0. Dansby Swanson broke an early tie with a two-run homer, and Atlanta picked up ground on the New York Mets atop the National League East with their victory over the San Francisco Giants. Major League wins leader Kyle Wright yielded one run on three hits in five and one-third innings as the Braves pulled within a half game of the Mets. Giants pitcher Jakob Yunus gave up four runs on seven hits in five-plus innings for the Giants, whose three-game winning streak ended. Braves 5, Giants won. Hugh Darvish allowed just two hits over eight innings, and Josh Hader picked up his 32nd save as visiting San Diego defeated Seattle. Darvish retired 16 consecutive Mariners between a first inning single by Eugenio Suarez and a leadoff single by Ty France in the seventh inning. He struck out seven without issuing a walk. The Padres got the only run they needed in the fourth on Will Myers' two out RBI double. Mariners starter Logan Gilbert allowed one run on four hits in five innings. Padres 2, Mariners 0. That's all for California Sports. Back to you. That's all we've got for you tonight. We'd love for you to join us again on California Today every weekday at 8.30 p.m. Make sure to check out our broadcast on our California Today webpage. You can find it at ntd.com slash California dash today. You can find all of our top latest clips there ready to share with friends and family. Send us a message on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or through our email, california.today at ntd.com. I'm Daniel Hall, sitting in for Lang Jang. Have a wonderful evening.